Hello, it's story time with Starfish. Oh, I'm Starfish. This is Woody the dog, and this kitty cat right here, this is Taffy the genius cat. And today, we're going to be reading Ode to Icky. This is a book about cats, too. And this is written by Miranda Russell, and the illustrations are by Nicholas Perusel. Okay, Miranda, are we ready? Are you ready, Woody? Are you ready, Taffy? Let's read Ode to Icky. I know. Okay. Are we well, Taffy's going to... You're going to be just fine. Okay, Ode to Icky. Ode to Icky is written by Miranda Russell and illustrated by Nicholas Peruzzo. And this is to my mom who always believed me, believed in me, and to Einstein, the real life Icky. Oh, is it real life Icky? I know, isn't that exciting? Okay. Most cats are known for their excellent grooming habits, but Icky was not like most cats. He hated doing anything other than sleeping or eating, so cleaning himself didn't fit into his plans. Eventually, Icky grew so filthy that the smell became overwhelming. No one could stand to be within 15 feet of him, not even his owner, Candy. <laughs> Luckily, Candy was a kind of a girl who could hold her breath every day long enough to run some food out to Icky, who is now living with the family dog in the backyard. This arrangement was fine with Icky, since he could sleep outside just as easily as inside. Plus, once the dog caught a whiff of Icky, she never came near him again. The days passed in a blur of naps and feedings as Icky settled into a peaceful routine. In fact, life was peaceful for the entire family until Candy came up with her latest money-making scheme. Hmm. This new scheme was inspired by Candy's older sister, Kayla, who inspired many of Candy's brainstorms. As far as Candy could see, these occasional inspirations were the only real benefit of having an older sister. The idea was born on an ordinary day as Candy sat in front of the television watching her favorite cartoon. As the show went to commercial, Kayla walked in the front door humming cheerfully. What are you so happy about, Candy asked. I just got the new perfume from France that everyone is wearing. Don't I smell sophisticated? Kayla asked, holding her, out her wrist for Candy to sniff. <laughs> Ew! You smell just like Icky, Candy squealed. Don't make fun of my perfume, Kayla snapped. I spent three months saving up to buy this. As Kayla stomped out of the room, Candy got a brilliant idea. <gasps> In fact, she was so excited. She turned off the TV and went into the kitchen to find an empty glass jar. Once she located an empty container, she filled it with water, grabbed a pair of scissors, and went out into the backyard. Icky was asleep as usual, probably dreaming about an all-you-can-eat seafood buffet. Candy sat down beside him and quietly cut off some of Icky's stinky, matted down hair. She took the clumps of hair and stuck them in a jar full of water. Soon the smell became too strong to handle. So she popped the lid on the glass jar and went back inside the house. Next, Candy snuck down the hallway towards her parents' bedroom. She peeked in to make sure neither of them were in the room and then crept silently over to her mother's dresser. She picked up several of her mother's half-empty perfume bottles and ran into the bathroom. Once there, she sat down on the bathroom floor and quickly dumped out the remaining perfume. Then she hurried back to her own bedroom and hid the empty bottles in her nightstand. The next morning, Candy was the first one up for school. She threw on some clothes, gulped down a bowl of cereal, and then ran back to her room. She twisted the lid off the jar containing Icky's hair mixture and almost gagged. <laughs> The stench was awful, but she forced herself to bear it. She carefully poured the stinky liquid into the smaller perfume bottles that she had borrowed from her mother. Once the perfume bottles were full, 
She snapped the lids on as fast as she could. Before she left for school, she took the old labels off the perfume bottles and put on some that she had designed herself. At first, she had planned to call her creation Ode to Icky, but that, but that didn't sound fancy or French enough, so she named it Ode Ish. Once at school, she convinced her classmates that this was the hottest new French perfume right off the runway. She was sold out within 10 minutes, but she still had many students begging her for a bottle. I'm sorry, but it was a limited supply. If I get any more, I will let you know, she told them as soon as she walked off to count her pile of cash. The students, who hadn't gotten a bottle, turned away sadly. However, their spirits lifted when a couple of girls who had brought, bought the perfume decided to share it. Soon, the perfume bottles had made their way throughout the entire elementary student body. You couldn't go anywhere without smelling eau de ish. <laughs> That was when Candy first started doubting the wisdom of her great plan. Sure, she was wealthy now, but everywhere she turned, she smelled cold, wet, icky. <laughs> By the end of the day, she was sure that no amount of money was worth this torture. Matters became even worse. When she got home, her mother met her at the door with her famous, boy, are you in trouble stare. Apparently, the perfume Candy poured out of her mom's half-empty bottles was actually French and very expensive. <gasps> her mother confiscated the cash Candy had made from her latest scheme and took away her allowance for the next two months. Just as Candy was finally done listening to her mother's lecture, her father came in looking angry. He looked straight at Candy and asked, who gave Icky such a horrible haircut? The end. Oh, to Icky, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Story time with Starfish. I'm Starfish. This is Woody and Taffy. Are you gonna? She was listening. She just wasn't in the film. <laughs>